welcome to the first episode of Plug TV with myself and delighted today to have as guest online Guy Woodman. PJ professional, touring professional, multiple winner, been on the big break, you may have seen him, not snooker but golf. Um, so Guy, welcome on board and uh, thanks, uh, th thanks for doing this Q&A with us. Pleasure, pleasure Mark, good, uh, good to be here and uh, good to talk to you. What Sorry. else will be doing in time so it's good to have a chat to you mate stay home stay safe lockdown and all that but uh today would be masters saturday moving day um absolutely devastated that we're, we're not there now but come november it's going to be fun yeah absolutely absolutely book your tickets now with double m travel there we go nice little plug on the plug to tv <laughs> <laughs> so um <laughs> So, so, Guy, we've known each other a long time. Um, obviously, meeting yep. you in the days of BBO, PGA, and you became a prolific, prolific winner. Um, and uh, and your career has obviously been quite, quite a legacy. Still playing at uh, the age of forty-two now, forty-three, are we? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. I mean, no man's land, apparently. Between thirty-five and fifty, that's no man's land. So, uh, but I'm trying to do the best I can with it. But still winning. Um, so recently won in November uh, on the Your Golf Travel uh, Overseas Pro-Am. Um, fantastic there. And I haven't played a lot of golf this year myself with, with everything going on. Um, I know I've had a few injuries and I know they, they've played you, your career as well. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and it only gets harder as you get older, doesn't it, Martin? I know that. But yeah, from sort of early 20s, I, I got some really bad lower back pains. and. Um, Took me a long time, nearly two years out of the game, to get to the bottom of it. But um, finally, now I've got some good people I work with, and I'm able to stay on top of it and generally stay pain free. But it does plague me from time to time, for sure. Sure, no, mate. It's, uh, it's one of those um, one of those things that we have to work hard at. So I actually use uh, guys down at the core clinics, which, which uh, are fantastic. So another little little plug there. Yeah. Uh, yeah so. Yeah. Big break. Um, tell us a little bit about uh, about how that came about, and and obviously, you know, you're renowned for your your fashion back in the day, and some 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 <laughs> unbelievable outfits. Yeah, you can call it fashion, Mark. Yeah, some people see it different light, but uh, yeah, I can look back at it on fond memories now. I think at the time I was a bit apprehensive and uh, wasn't sure because in, in reality TV shows, they can really edit the show to make you look like a complete fool or a good guy or however they want you to be perceived. So it was all new to me. And um, there was a few of us on the Euro Pro Tour that year. We, we saw the adverts that were put up, flyers, the first event um, of the year. And the guy I was rooming with, a good friend of mine, David Fisher, he was desperate to get on the show. And we were both good friends with um, William Hunt, who was a member at Stoke Park where we were. And he just started releasing his golf line of clothing. So it was all clad checkered pants, you know, and the Trilby hat, all that stuff, the stuff he's famous for now with his Trilby tour that you can see on Sky Sports. Um, so he was giving us a bit of gear and we started wearing it and we thought we were like, you know, the dogs, you know, wearing it and all this stuff. So, uh, but look back at it now and I just think, what was I doing? But yeah, it was a bit of, bit of fun. I wish I'd have had the game to back it up, but we went to all these auditions and um, obviously my great personality got me on the show. Um, um, I can vouch for that. <laughs> something like that but yeah poor old Dave he was a bit disappointed because he, he knew he'd been following the show up to that point and back then we got the golf channel on Sky whereas we don't anymore so it's, the big break has kind of died it's still going on in America but anyway I managed to get through all the prelim preliminaries but on the show and I'm sure it was a, a bit to do with my dress wear no doubt about it and um, yeah it was one of the best things I ever did when I look back at it because uh, it taught me a lot of things and um, they wanted to try and, the Golf Channel would try and create this sort of Ryder Cup atmosphere, six Americans against six Europeans. But it didn't kind of work out like that. I mean, everyone really got on well and it was a great show. And it did have its moments, its feisty bits. Tommy Two Gloves was on the show, that day, obviously, is the winner on the PGA Tour now. Uh, Warren Bladen, ex British amateur champion. There were some really good players on there, but it's nerve wracking. You've got 24 cameras around you, you've got 40 film crew all these things that people don't the viewers don't see and you were given like 10 minutes to warm up and told this is what you're going to be doing in front of the camera uh, and then obviously it gets it gets aired a few months later and you know you can be made to look at a complete fool or uh, 
a good guy. So um, yeah, a lot came came out of it. Um, if I'd have won that final, which I just I lost on the last hole, uh, if I'd have won that, then I'm sure a few more doors would have opened up. But uh, I look back on it and fond memories. You know, yeah, very good. I mean, we we, we could talk uh, we could talk on here forever about the hard knocks of professional life and the brutality of, of the game. But along the journey, it's obviously been you know great fun. You you travelled endlessly. Um, I know we went down to South Africa back in. 2002 and, and you had some good successes there and yeah. and obviously from, from that you then have played Asian tour um, and, and again uh, a bit of fun um, you, you're not partial to a bit of media work Guy uh, if any of the, the listeners are, are listening on check out Guy on the Asian tour with uh, with Steve that, that's a real story there um, but, so I mean there's this image of you coming out of the water looking like the Hoff but with some dodgy golf tan going on there Guy yeah yeah, very dodgy. I don't know what I was doing at the time. <laughs> I mean, I thought it was going to be a. They they painted it like, yeah, we want we want to do a Top Gun scene, a volleyball on the beach, and we want you being Daniel Craig coming out of the water, and we want to do all these different movie scenarios uh, with the two of you. And every week, the Asian tour were doing new profiles of the rookies on the tour to try and get people who did watch <laughs> some idea of who the new guys were, and uh, they thought it would be a good idea. And, me and Steve, we both got our cards that year and we were the only English guys who did. So we, we formed a really good relationship, um, friendship, and um, we roomed together and they did this feature on us. But uh, yeah, it's a bit cringeworthy when I look back, but a good laugh. Check out, check out that. It is it was amusing. Um, obviously, the reason we, we, we play is it, it, it's a business for us both. Uh, you know, professional golf is, is there. And obviously, the difference between the top level and, and where we're at in terms of monetary it's just massive guy isn't it sadly i mean it's and yet the ability yes is the divide as well they're, 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 these guys are absolutely insane but you've come so close on so many times with opportunities that maybe just slip by a little bit but again we learn everything is feedback and and hope, hope you don't mind me mentioning 2016 bmw pj championship so you've played your way in you, you, you played yeah. incredible goal for a, a solid, consistent year. To, to even get into this event is, you know, takes takes some doing. And after round one, you 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 three under par. You're tied with last year's Open champion, Chain Lowry. Notable names on the leaderboard there, with yourself tied on three under Graham McDowell, Alexander Norin. At this point, you're only four shots back. I, I mean, how do you feel at this point in in your in your career? Yeah, good. R really good. It was an incredible experience. Um, I'd done some good work with my mind leading into the event, and um, I think for me, I I'd been injured prior to it, so I, I wasn't. I didn't feel that prepared from a physical point of view. But it also took a bit of pressure off because I went into it thinking, well, if it doesn't, if I don't, if I, if I don't make the cut or etc., it's not the end of the world because I didn't really have the time because of my injury. But mens I really worked hard on my visualisation and my mental side of things. So that was good. And I think the key to anyone who qualifies in that event, because it's very few spots now available for PGA pros, but if they do get the opportunity, it's hard to take that chance. And my only advice would be for any youngsters who do qualify, uh, is play practice rounds with as many good players as you can. Get comfortable on the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, don't hang around the place. Just get in and out get your work done and then Thursday you should feel a bit more com comfortable. I know I played with Brandon Stone on the Tuesday and then I played with Luke Donald, David Lipsky and Jamie Lovemark on the Wednesday and that's the most nervous I've ever been on the first tee, hitting my tee shot there in front of so many people. Uh, so come Thursday afternoon I felt really settled so I was ready to go I was, um, and, and, it, and it showed you know apart from a poor finish I could have been almost leading the tournament. I mean, through 12 holes, I was 500, and it felt the easiest 500 I'd done. So, yeah, I was in good shape going into that second day for sure. And uh, and then obviously you sleep on it, and 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 that's one of the biggest challenges I think that we we face in this game is mm -hmm. is the time frame period. Uh, I mean, mm -hmm. I recall back on a on a personal level, um, playing qualifying school, and and my father had come over, had a caddy, done it all properly, and. and it's just that adrenaline shift. It, it, I got so excited, and yet this was only stage one. And I remember playing a practice round and, and shooting five under the, the, the eve of the tournament, and I was buzzing. And then instead of thinking, 
I'm playing great. I went to bed thinking, I hope I haven't used all my shots, you know, and, and I learned from that. That's a mistake. One, don't score in a practice round. But yeah. you, you've gone to bed that night on three under par in, in the tournament. Um, and then, yeah, quite briefly, missed out narrowly on, on making the cut guy, sadly. Yeah. Um, and uh, and a, good, a, good, a good friend of yours, um, Clive uh, was on the bag, and, and he actually sent me a couple of messages to ask you. And and oh, did he? That's you good. Did. Yeah, they're, they're, they're just here actually. And, and he, says, he says, he says, ask ask the main man. He says, if he was to have a mulligan in his life, where would he take it? Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in life or on the golf course? Let's on, say on, I know. On, 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 on the golf course. On the golf course. <laughs> uh, yeah, ten, uh, ten to tee in the second round for sure. Um, uh, to cut a long story short, uh, on the wall, I felt great going into that second day. I was in the tournament, hit a great tee shot down the first, had eight iron off the down slope. And prior to that, on the on the warm up, I'd hit a few out of the heel. And I said to Clive then, I said, I feel like there's a shank in me today. Totally the wrong thoughts, but that's how it felt. I was hitting a lot out of the heel. And of course, off that down slope on the first, I hit an eight iron and hit it 90 degrees into the into the crowd, made double at the first, and then of course you stand on the second tee, eight iron, third hole after the tee shot, eight iron, and it seemed like every other hole I had an eight iron in my hand, and I just felt like I was going to shank everything. But cut that long story short, I stood on the tenth tee, I was two over the day, one under for the tournament, so, so still well into it, pins back left, slightly into the breeze, 205 to the pin, not thinking about it, that's normally a five iron, and I've hit pull five iron. I think Clive was thinking, Let's hit six. You know, if you're 30, 40 feet short, it's not the end of the world there. You can't go long. Of course, my mind was, wasn't really thinking. I've just pulled five, flushed it, actually hit the middle of the club face for the first time that day and airmailed the green. And then, of course, you've got no shot, hard and no green to work with. Made bogey, four tee shot the next bogey, and then it was just an uphill battle. Um, and I actually managed to birdie the last hole with a glimmer of hope, but I missed the cut by a shot. And uh, that's how fine lines golf can be you know from making zero money to i think if you made the cut and finish last it's 10 grand possibly and, um, and, and i mean that and that and that stage is you know incredible wentworth it, obviously the home of the pga championships and it, it's an amazing golf course so you, you've got massive highs you've got the, the crowd there you've got the mm -hmm. tv there you've got everything there you've got the sponsors boards it's a, it's a slightly different environment to what we're generally used to playing e even though that the, the, the development tools are fantastic mm. nothing can recreate the crowd sky yeah i mean um how, how, how do you feel playing in front of the the, the crowds is that something that's a well I, obviously everyone was coming, yeah everyone was coming out to watch the name woodman obviously um the biggest name in the field but uh, uh so the second day when we we're in the middle of the day and it's a lovely <laughs> summer's day um spring day and uh, um, you know, the crowds were buzzing that day and, and I'd obviously had, had done well and I had the family and all local support out with me. So there was quite a few uh, following around. But yeah, that particular year and leading into that year, I hadn't played any tournament golf in front of crowds. I hadn't played really at any high level. Um, and from the moment I qualified for the tournament, it was six months prior. And then you're going through the winter with no competitive golf. You can do as much practice as you want, but it doesn't really prepare you for what you're about to uh, dip your toe into. And obviously you're playing against guys that have come off the Asian swing, the South African swing, and they're, they're ready to go. It's just another tournament for them. But of course, for me, it was six months of build up and it feels like the biggest tournament in your life. But I, mean, I, think, um, I think everybody knows you guys, certainly uh, from, a, from a, a national and a, and a regional point of view. Hmm. Let's not get away from the fact that you have had a very colorful playing career. And, and won multiple times. Um, so obviously winning on the Euro Pro Tour as well. All, all of your achievements are no mean feat at all. I mean, a, a very a very good playing career, but I think what I'm trying to actually just present here is the difference between what these guys are seeing on the TV and where we're at is very little in terms of ability, but their lifestyles are absolutely massively different. And, and, and that's why it's so difficult to, to break through. Um, so how many yeah, times have you, how many times have you been to European Tour? Uh, okay. You've been to or, or, um, qualifying school. Double, you double double figures for sure. And I, I had a period there where I probably didn't even try for five or six years. 
okay. just because of finances and um, situations at home and family and etc. You know, and, and how many times you keep going flogging a dead horse, you know. Uh, and I think I think that's I something mean, I still that feel again some some of the, the people watching there certainly in the professional game will will, will understand that and and uh, reason with it. But from the amateur point of view, I mean, the cost of, of playing and competing is it, it, it's astronomical. I mean, uh, I think mm. entry fees now are fourteen hundred for qualifying school. If I'm right, I think and you can go higher than that, mate. I think you can go it, more than that. Mm. Is, is it gone up? It's gone up since I've done yeah. it. So uh, yeah, and that's just that's just the entry fee. And then you know, if you're taking caddies, travel, accommodation, you know, sure. petrol fee, food, everything. I mean, if you do all three stages, um. Yeah. Probably not far off ten grand by the end of it, um, uh, and 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 that certainly heaps the pressure on coming down the stretch. Yeah, of course. Well, it's another, <laughs> it's another, another thing there subconsciously. I mean, obviously in the moment you're not thinking of it, you're just trying to hit the golf ball as best you can to the target you're trying to hit to. But um, when things definitely starting to go against you and in between shots, yeah, these things can pop into your head for sure. It's one less distraction you don't need, but it's all part of the parcel, you know. You get chances in life. All, all, if you part, grab them. All, all part of the journey. So, uh, so, 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 you know, known as um, known as Woody, obviously, um, mm -hmm. also revered as the swordsman. Uh, really, so yeah. to, apparently, so to your to your close friends, but we, we won't go into that. No, no, um, no. So, yeah, what's your best achievement to date? Would you say? Best achievement? Oh, fun, crikey! What a good question. Uh, I can't think. I mean, yeah. Um, at the time, you know, uh, qualifying for the South African Open was really good in my early part of my career. I played with Charles Swartzel in the last round of the Vodacom uh, Players Tournament in Cape Town. And, was, that, uh, was, that the year, was that the year I was over, 2002, was it? I think so, yeah, yeah. yeah. I managed yeah. to get into that tournament and I shot 67 the last day hitting it sideways. And Charles Swartzel was playing his first professional event and we ended up getting paired in the last round. And he actually shot 76 that day. But you could see he was going to be a class act. The ball striking was, was pretty I've amazing. Actually, I've actually played three holes with Charles, and, and what a lovely guy he is mm. as well, eh? Yeah, absolutely. Quiet guy, obviously. Um, yeah. I don't know at all, but you know, spent a few hours with him that day, and it was good to get an insight what was about to come. And um, you know, I was proud of myself to get through, which top 10, and it got me into the SA Open. Um, yeah, obviously didn't play well there, but it was a great experience at the time. Uh, I would say. The first guy to win the English, the British, the Australian uh, PGA Assistance Championships in the same year. Um, that was a good uh, feat. Um, yeah, I've qualified for the BMW a few times. Missed out in a playoff for the Open Sudden Death a couple of times. Yeah, all good things. Nothing I can think of at the top of my head, you know. But oh, well, there's, there's, there's some great answers there, guys. So I'll put you on the spot mm. there a little bit. Yeah. Um, yeah. Next, uh, next quick question here. So, uh, double M quick fire round here, uh, asking what's off the top of your head here. So, yeah, who's your football team? Well, there's only one team, isn't there, Mark? It's your arch rivals. Um, I think we won more Premier Leagues and league titles than you guys by quite a bit. And after <laughs> this year, after this year, when your your title doesn't count, we'll be, still be way ahead. So, it's Man United, yeah. It's heart. It's heartbreaking right now. Uh, there's only well, there's yeah. only one ship that's not docked in in Liverpool, and that's that's the Premiership. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, so um, yeah. Also, best player you've ever played with, and and there we we've we've noted Masters champion Luke Donald. Um, who's the best player you've ever played with? Yeah, I've played with a, a few former number ones. Louis Hayes, and obviously it wasn't, but um, I played with him, Charles Schwartz, or Luke Donald. Uh, Justin Rose, some really good players. But back in the time, when it, what resonates with me the most is, uh, I think it was 1990, Barry Lane, played with him. He'd just come off winning the Anderson Consulting Championship, beating David Cross. And as a young kid, 15, I think I was at the time, 16, um, the way he hit, struck the ball, struck long irons, one irons, uh, was just, I suppose you could use the word mesmerising at the time. He was a class act, um, so that sticks with me. He would definitely be right up there. Okay, that's, that's cool. That's cool. And um, your best shot you've ever hit? Huh. 
I can't think of one of Mark. <laughs> You've so many. I know we've all made so many. It's a tough question. Um, I don't think I've ever hit one. That's the problem. Who's uh, who's your hero? Who's my hero? Oh, Lee Trevino, without a doubt. Yeah. Um, okay. If I, I just wish I could have seen him live. Um, I never got to see him live. Um, a bit like Seve, I never really got to see much of him live. Um, or Nicholas, guys like that. Hogan, I would love to see him live. But Trevino, he's definitely. I love the way he swung the swung the club, and love the way he um, just went about life and played the game. So yeah, Tex Mex, no doubt about it. And well, that's interesting because um, you go around your life pretty laid back as well, guy. You know what, what's uh, what's with the <laughs> what's with the timekeeping issues, eh? <laughs> yeah, I've been late but, on tea a number of times, missed tour cards because of it, Asian tour cards. That is so. Um, oh. Yeah. That's definitely my one fault in life, uh, my uh, time management. You're, you're, you're too chilled. You're too chilled. I'm so, too um, chilled. so, obviously, continuing with good practice, even in this time of lockdown, what, what, what are you doing to stay flexible, fit, focused, and hopefully mm -hmm. we'll be out at the other end of this um, and, and we're, we're still yeah. in one piece? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, it's difficult. I've got a little three-year-old boy, so he takes a lot of time. My wife's still working full-time, so... I'm taking a lot of those uh, duties on and it's great to have the time with him, awesome. But it gives me very little time. So um, I might get an hour during the day when he sleeps and I try and do a little um, functional movement pattern routine that I've got a number of. So, you know, very lightweight, body weight stuff, um, trying to keep flexible and my body moving, especially in the hips and the thoracic region, which we know is so important for golf. And then probably eight o'clock to nine o'clock when he goes to bed, that sort of time. I'll, I'll do a half hour, 45 minutes in the garden, hitting into a net. Um, mm -hmm. Luckily, I've got a track man at the moment. I've borrowed off a friend, so uh, I'm doing a bit of track man work when I can. But that's about it, really. So if I get two hours a day max um, of work, it's, it's all I can do. So it's better than nothing, isn't it? That's the way I see it. Yeah, I mean, I know there's a, a lot of a lot of my pupils are ringing me up and they're so frustrated right now. And I know we all are in this together, the frustration. <laughs> But yeah. to, to, I really can't stress the importance to, to everybody because everyone's going to just come straight out from this lockdown and they're going to just go right straight to the course. But actually, that's gonna, that's, that could be a little bit dangerous for them because they could pull a muscle or it's so important to stay flexible, do the right things, yeah. even in this. Do what you can, yeah? That's just really the, the message that I would put out there. Yeah, I mean, it's all about consistency, isn't it? There's no point doing three or four hours in one day and then not doing anything for another week or so. It's, it's about can you do it every day, just a little bit, even if it's five, ten minutes. I think that's more beneficial than just being very sporadic with it. It's like and running or something, trying to run you, a marathon and, and not and doing would, it. And would you put that down to, to why you've been such a consistent performer for nearly two decades now? Um, would you put that down to focus doing the same thing, the right thing? The, or have you experimented a little bit in that time? A consistent performance at a low level, yeah, um, a lower level. Um, I, I've always struggled at a higher level because you're too, hu you're too humble, guy. You're too humble. <laughs> well, yeah, I've, I've not achieved what I want to achieve in my golfing career up to date. So, but uh, the, when I have played well, you know, at a regional level, um, yeah, I just try and give a little. You, you hear everyone say it, but try and give a little bit better every day, I guess. And it's knowing you, it's knowing you, your mind, your body, and health. What you need is all about knowing what you need to do to improve, having the right people around you and working on the right things. And if you can do that, hopefully over time, certainly for me, a long time, uh, who knows, maybe my time might come when I'm 50, you never know. But um, I, I just love the challenge of trying to get better. So um, there's no point working on the wrong things, but sometimes it takes you time to figure those things out. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Well, I'm, I'm certainly for one looking forward to getting back on the fairways, practicing training. And I know we've knocked mm. about a little bit in the past, so I look forward to, to pegging it up with you um, post COVID-19. Uh, yeah. Guy, it's been um, an absolute pleasure. Um, I know off the golf course right now, you're working quite hard with uh, Pro Agenda, of which um, mm -hmm. I utilize as a, as a teaching professional as well. It's a fantastic online platform. Uh, it's got some really good yeah. analysis tools and it's actually allowing me to, to communicate even in this time of lockdown. And, and as I say, for, for any, any other golf pros out there that haven't explored it, I, I, I want to say thank you to you because you put me in touch mm. with them. And, and it's 
is helping my my business right now. So your Good. your role with with Pro Agenda, uh, just just tell us quickly before we we close out here what what, what yeah. you're what you're doing. Uh, yeah, I'm just a salesman ro uh, salesman role really part time. It, um, you know, to help finance my living away when I can't play golf. Um, uh, I, I just do two or three days a week with Pro Agenda, and anyone who wants to know about the system, please get in touch. I can give them a de demo at any time and explain how it can help improve their teaching business. And as we know, so many guys are still using the paper diary, and most people are starting to go online. It's what the younger generation know, know now. So, um, yeah, that's my role. I, I, I try and sell the thing, and um, if anyone's interested in knowing more, please get in touch. Perfect. Cool. And um, obviously, uh yeah, Masters that hasn't happened. So, so this weekend, who would have won? Who, who would have won? Uh, I'm going to say Justin Thomas would have won. Okay, yeah. that's, a, that's yeah. a good effort. Good effort. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and, and you think JT also for November? Yeah, yeah, he's my man. Um, you can't. I think November is going to. I presume it's going to play softer and longer, and it's going to be one of the bombers again. You know, can't rule out Justin Thomas. McElroy, wouldn't it be great to see him? Um, win the Grand Slam and obviously everyone's Cinderella story again is Tiger and it back to back with a broken back so uh, that would be amazing but um, yeah it'd be, it'd be one of the top knockers again I'm sure. Perfect guy um, well it's been an absolute pleasure thank you ever so much yep. you've been plugged so uh, thanks um, thanks for coming <laughs> online and uh, I, as I say massive um, massively looking forward to, to getting out there and we will have that game again very very soon well i'll see you on the euro pro tour when i'm up well that was the plan eh that was the plan um yeah. this, week, th this week was qualifying school wasn't it yeah get clive on the bag and you're away mate <laughs> yeah, there we go <laughs> so yeah no, i'm looking forward to uh, getting back out there and and really you know making what we can of 2020 season when it unfolds yeah absolutely and um look forward to your, your golf travel um little shindig at the masters Get some guys out there with you, uh, double M travel. It'd be good. I'm Absolutely. looking to do the same myself. So, um, oh, it's, uh, it's, yeah, an experience it's, like, it's an experience like no other. So, yeah, it's mm. uh, it's amazing. Brilliant. Okay. Top man. Okay. Enjoy Your talking star. to you. Take care. Stay, Cheers, stay, mate. Bye-bye. Stay, stay, stay home, stay safe. All right. Take care. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Bye. Take care, mate. Bye-bye.